So what are we looking at today? Well, this is our new Izeki TLE 3410 compact tractor. It's a 40 horsepower machine with a brand new stage five engine. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later. It's got a three, three range hydrostatic transmission and will lift a thousand kilos at the back end on the three point linkage. It's an incredibly versatile machine, which will hit a variety of uh, markets. So homeowners use this, we sell it into agriculture, great for sports grounds and that kind of application as well. So it really is a very versatile tractor. But we'll start off by looking at the engine. So let's have a look at this engine. I've opened the hood here, it's a one piece hood, it gives me great access, really easy to, to open and get access to this engine. And what have we got as an engine here? This is an Izeki built, three cylinder, turbocharged, common rail diesel engine. And like all the Izeki engines, we have big displacement so we can spin it relatively slowly and generate less vibration, use less fuel and so on. So this is a 1.8 litre engine that we're only going to turn at 2,600 RPM to generate a full 40 horsepower and tremendous amount of torque. Now, to achieve the stage five regulations, the engines have to burn much cleaner and give out much less particulates. And we do that by using a DPF and a catalytic converter, which means we don't need to have AdBlue as well. So let's have a look at uh, how we service this engine, just the day-to-day -day stuff that you might need to do. Air cleaners here right at the front of the engine out of the way. Uh, you can see the radiator just behind that. And we've got a little bug screen there, keeps the radiator nice and clean. Battery, easy access to that. So uh, if ever you need to service that and you can see the coolant tank is there. Moving back from that, you can see the alternator there and the fan belt, easy to get out that whole area. And the dipstick is there. And you don't actually have to open the hood to, uh, to get at that dipstick. As we think about the routine maintenance that you're going to need to do on a machine such as this, I mentioned air cleaners at the front, coolant tank there, very easy to get at. As we move further back here, we've got the oil filter there, very easy just to spin off. Fuel filter is here. So for that routine maintenance, it really isn't much hassle uh, to get that done. So let's have a look at the dashboard and controls here at the front. As you can see, it's kind of an automotive style uh, dashboard here. We've got a really clear, easy to read fuel gauge. This is the revs per minute of the engine. And you can see here to get in the green there, which is what would give you 540 at the PTO at the back. You can see there we're spinning the engine, as I mentioned earlier, it's so 25, 2600 RPM, something like that. There's also an hour meter there to show you how much work the tractor's done. Over on this side, you've got the combi switch, which gives you the lights control, indicators, horn, that kind of thing, as well as the hazard light. There's two controls there, which I'm going to talk about uh, more a little bit later. Moving to this side, we've got the hand throttle here, again, easy to operate, and the PTO. And the PTO engagement has got a nice feature called soft start, so that instead of the PTO engaging suddenly, as it were, I can press that button in and now you'll get a slow engagement. So as I then turn that and pull it up, that's the PTO engaged. And by hitting the soft start, it means that the, the implement on the back starts nice and slowly. It doesn't put a lot of stress on the implement or the tractor. So that's the main controls here at the front. So I mentioned earlier about these two buttons here. These are to do with the regeneration uh, that happens on a stage five engine. So periodically the engine notices that there's soot built up in the catalytic converter and it has to run really hot to burn all that soot off. It's called regeneration. Now sometimes if that was happening when you're actually using the tractor uh, out on the grass or somewhere like that, you probably don't want it happening there. So if I press this upper button here, that will kill the regeneration if it starts. Once you've done that a couple of times, you obviously the engine does need to regenerate. So when you're parked up somewhere, it's somewhere uh, convenient for you to do so, if you then press the lower button, that will induce a regeneration of the catalytic converter, and then that, that will uh, re re resort out the engine again. So one of the things you'll notice as you look at all the controls is there's three primary colors you'll see, orange, yellow, and gray. Now anything orange is to do with the forward motion or rearward motion of the tractor. It's to do with the traction circuit. So as we look at the controls on the left-hand side here, this is the range selector. So as I mentioned before, it's got a three-speed hydrostatic drive, so I can pick which range I want there. And that's really useful. You can go up to 25 kilometers an hour in top range, but I can also go really, really slowly, but with tremendous torque, which I'm gonna need later as I show you uh, some rotivating that we're gonna do in one of the paddocks here. 
Obviously the handbrake is to do with the motion, motion of the machine. So again, that's orange there. And then we can put it into four wheel drive. We push that down, it's in four wheel drive, pull it up, it's in two wheel drive. Nice and easy to get up there from the seat. The final thing here is a diff lock uh, pedal. So in the event of really extreme conditions where the four wheel drive isn't giving you enough, you can just stamp on that with your, with your heel and that will actually put it into a diff lock situation which gives you a tremendous amount of traction. So that's the main controls down the left hand side of the machine. Okay, so uh, I'm now sat on the seat here. One of the things I can do, this is a full suspension seat and I can adjust that based on my weight just with that control there. I can go forwards and backwards as well just to get myself really comfortable. It is a very, very comfortable tractor uh, to operate. One of the other things that we've changed between the TLE 3400, which is the predecessor to this one, and this new TLE 3410, is we've now got a twin lever control for the forward and reverse. So this one I go forwards, this one I go backwards. It's so easy and so little fatigue uh, for the operator to use. It's tremendous, actually, really, really comfortable. Foot brake there, obviously if you need to stop. Then here, this is uh, the machine comes standard with one double acting spool valve. You can have a second one as an option. I just control that there again with this grey lever which is to do with the PTO and so on. And then this final one here is the position control for the three point linkage. So again, I can lift and lower that. That will lift that three point linkage up, as I mentioned before, which will lift a thousand kilos at the uh, balls, 810 kilos, 24 inches behind the balls, which is a tremendous lift uh, for a tractor of this size. So that's the controls of the machine we've had a look at. We're now at the back of the tractor. So as we look through here, this obviously is where you're gonna put your number plate. Then here, uh, this is for the double acting spool valve where you plug your implement in on the back. Here's your trailer socket, your electrical socket for when you're towing a trailer. Nice little spring clip there, just holds that top link in place so it doesn't wobble around too much. And then moving down, this is a drawbar clevis we have here. Now you can tow a three and a half ton trailer behind this tractor as long as the trailer is braked. So that's a really good towing weight uh, that we've got uh, behind the, the, the tractor. Three point linkage, we've got a thousand kilos of lift as I mentioned before at the ball ends, which is great again for this size of tractor. And if I just step out of shop for a minute here, just have a look at that gearbox there. Look at the weight that we've put into that. We really haven't skimped on the materials. It really is a heavy duty rear end, which is really what you want on a really heavy duty working tractor like this. So that's enough about uh, all the details of this machine. Let's uh, go get ourselves an implement so we can show you it working. Listen to that engine start up, isn't that a fabulous sound? That's the new stage five engines. So I'm just gonna pop it in range here. And we'll go get ourselves an implement and go mowing. Okay, so we've hooked ourselves up with a uh, 1.75 meter Wessex flail that they very kindly uh, lent us. And we're in this paddock that actually hasn't been cut since about October last year. So we've got quite a heavy lush growth here. So we're gonna run up and down here a few times. I'm actually gonna put it in medium speed. I mentioned before, we've got three uh, ranges that we can use. And I think for this kind of activity, the middle one is about right. So we'll crank up that lovely engine. I've put it on soft start because on a flail, I don't particularly wanna impact that really quickly. And I'm gonna let the handbrake off. We're going there, so here we go. So I'm gonna just rev it right up. And now I'm gonna drop the flail into position. And now I've done the soft start. You hear the engine note change? That is the flail now, fully engaged. We go reasonable speed, we've got plenty of torque, plenty of power. Just gonna knock all this down. Now one of the other things I mentioned was that we've actually got a, uh, a double acting spool valve here. And in fact, on this machine, I can move the flail side to side, depending on what I want to do. So as you can see here, we've actually changed the tractor over to these wide agricultural tyres. Now the tractor itself, you saw it earlier on the turf tyres, they're standard, or there's a narrow ag that's also standard, but you have got the option of upgrading to these slightly wider ag tyres. And for what I'm doing here, which is going to be some rotivating, I've gone with these slightly uh, wider tyres. Other options you can get, we can put a C3 loader on the front, um, which is a great powerful uh, loader that will fit straight onto this machine. Uh, and you also have the option of a uh, second spool valve on the back. One spool valve comes as standard, but you have got the option of a second. So there are options and other things that you can accessorize the tractor with. 
So uh, another job we're going to do here, which really is going to highlight the, um, the benefit we get from the low range, because I'm going to do some rotivating, which I need to do pretty slowly. We've had this organic matter put onto this uh, paddock here, uh, and we want to rotivate it in. So we've got to go pretty slowly because we really want to get that churned up. So let's, let's give that a go and see how we get on. So I'm going to start the engine. So this time I'm going to put it into the lowest of the, uh, of the gears. And uh, I've got to start the PTO here, so I pull that on, off we go. So now we're just going to creep forwards because I really don't want to go very quick, I just want to let it do its thing here. Just breaking up the material, again this is a, a Wessex uh, rotary, so they kindly lent us. You can see I've got complete control of the tractor here, it's not pushing me forwards that often happens with a rotivator because I've got such control because I'm in that lower gear. I mentioned before that we've got three ranges on the hydrostat here, so I'm going to put it in top gear because I'm going to be driving down the road here, and you can just kind of see the kind of speed that we've got. We've got up to 25 kilometres an hour actually, which is a really good road speed. Still very comfortable, I've got great visibility with two big mirrors, it's a really good tractor on the road. So when you finish your mowing, your rotivating, and sadly, it's time to put your tractor away. You might want to be putting it into a low garage like the one you can see behind me here. So we thought of that and we have a folding rops in place. So you just kind of loosen these hand nuts here. They're to stop any vibration or rattle that you might get. Simply pull out the pin, as I'm showing here, and then I can just pull that back pretty easily because you notice it's got a gas strut there. And there we are, that's down. I can now drive it into my garage very easily. Again, to put it back up, dead easy. Just push it up, you can see the gas strut helping me there. Pop these back through the holes and we're ready to go again.